Hey, hey, how are you? Oh, I hope you're doing well today, tonight, this morning, whatever time it is for you. Uh, it's always good to see you, and uh, I'm so grateful for you joining with me in this journey every week, uh, looking at today the Smith and Hellwes Formation Sunday School lesson for Sunday, June the 16th. Peter's denial, Mark 14, 66 through 72. Thanks again so much. Bo in the Beard, the Center for Christian Education, you know all of that stuff. Uh, just grateful that you are with me today. Oh, oh, Peter, your pride is about to get you into trouble. I just posted a few moments ago on social media, quit making little compromises. Stay focused on your mission and values. Peter, Simon Peter, the rock on which Jesus will build this church. That rock, that stability, uh, also describes a bit of his hard-headedness. Peter lost himself for a few moments in that courtyard that fateful night and uh, the consequences were huge. I was preparing to go to seminary. We were at the church camp uh, before we were getting ready to move and go to Louisville for seminary. And a chaplain friend and I were visiting and he said to me, Prosser, if you can hold on to yourself, you're going to make a wonderful minister. I've never forgotten those words. And Chaplain Russ, I'll never forget that moment when you and I shared that conversation. And I've been trying to hold on to myself. I've been trying to hold on to the spark of Jesus that is within me ever since we had that conversation. Along the way, some of those little compromises that have that I've made have compromised me in in ways that would later become painful. Those little compromises that make me veer off course, maybe just a degree, maybe just a maybe just a little bit off course. Over time, that little degree of deviation has taken me to places I really didn't want to go. And I had to come back to myself. I had to reclaim my commitment to Jesus. I had to reclaim my focus and my values and my mission and, and start again. Peter forgot about his mission and vision for a moment. He lost himself. He forgot about his mission and vision. He forgot about his promise to Jesus in the upper room. And suddenly he hears the rooster crowing twice and knows he's forgotten himself. Peter was following at a distance. His motives were good. He wanted to find out what was happening. He wanted to get as close to Jesus as he could, yet he followed at a distance. Not only was he far away from Jesus, he was also undercover, if you will. He was in the court of the chief priests while Jesus was on trial. Following at a distance, cloaked in darkness, is not how loyal disciples behave. We can't follow at a distance. We can't stand on the periphery. We can't be undercover disciples. We can only follow Jesus up close and personal. And as we do, we don't make compromises. As we do, we don't make excuses. We are committed 
to the following of our faith and our Lord, and fear took Peter away from himself, from his mission and his values. The same has been true in my life. The same has probably been true in your life. The same will definitely be true for those who come to your class on Sunday. Peter lost himself. Maybe some of us have lost ourselves. And this is a lesson that calls us back to focus, to focus on who Jesus is in our lives and how we represent that mission and value to the world. We don't grow in faith by thinking that we know everything about everything. We grow through a continued dependence and obedience to our Lord. We all have similar weaknesses as Peter, especially when we let pride get in our way. Faith that endures does not come from within us. We're not born with it. It is cultivated in us as we cling to our Savior. My friend Charles Qualls says it like this, we can't out-sin God's grace. God's grace is greater than any of our shortcomings. Are you an impatient reader? Do you like to skip to the end of a book first to see if it's worth reading? Then based on the ending, you might go back and read and catch up. Well, we already know the ending of this story. Peter's denial would take him through deep personal anguish, but he would come out the other end with the blessing and love of Jesus. Next week, we'll talk about that. Peter's faith failed him. Actually, Peter failed his faith, but that's not the end of the story. The power of this text, the power of this story, the power of our story is God's grace. And we know the rest of the story. But this is Peter's lowest moment. And while we can't block out the restoration that will come, in Mark 14, Peter failed Jesus by denying him. Peter was afraid of what would happen if he said, yes, I'm a disciple and this man is innocent. Yes, I'm a disciple, and you all need to hear what he's having to say. Most of us, most of us just don't have the courage to do that. Peter would ultimately receive forgiveness from Jesus. And the book of Acts reveals that Peter would become the father of the New Testament church. On this rock, Jesus would build his church. But before we can get there, we have to sit with this a moment, Peter's denial. Failure is a part of life. Because we are human, Milton Hershey failed over a hundred times before he developed a chocolate that would become Hershey's chocolate. Hank Aaron and Michael Jordan failed long before they became superstars. These people grew and matured and learned from their failures. And we must do the same. Stories of our struggles, stories of our failure have, have much to teach us. 
and much to offer us. Peter denied Jesus in the moment of Jesus's deepest need. Peter says, I, I don't know him. I never knew him. I'm not one of him. I'm not one of them. Even cursing to make his point. And that was fear, pure fear at work in Peter's heart. We have that same fear. We have the same challenge or call to courage. And most of us will fail at some point when we are called to be courageous. But if we're lucky enough, as my friend Jim Morgan says, if we're lucky enough, we will live long enough to receive the forgiveness and grace of God and to, and to know it, not just know it up here, but to know it down here. So uh, the strength of our faith isn't measured by how loudly we proclaim it. You and I all know of people who are boisterous in their proclamations of faith, and yet that's all they do is shout out their prideful following of faith. If it's not the volume of our hollerings of faith, how do we measure strength of faith? How do we demonstrate strength of faith? I think Peter gives us a clue. Peter did not give up, but he continued to live beyond that night of denial to the point that he knelt before Jesus asking forgiveness in the days to come. How do we measure a strength of faith? How do we determine whether someone is the real deal or not when they speak of their faith? Secondly, uh, you might talk about pride and confidence, and where is the healthy line of pride and confidence? We, we need to be proud of who we are, but not prideful. There's a difference. We need to be confident in who we are, but not so overconfident that we can't be heard. What's the line for you? Where's the line that you uh, begin to turn people off as they talk along the way. I throw in some bonus coverage for you today. At the first part of Mark 14, Jesus says, you will deny me. And Peter keeps saying, no, I won't, no, I won't, no, I won't. And Jesus is saying, yes, you will, yes, you will, yes, you will. And Peter says, no, I won't. To which finally Jesus says, before the rooster crows twice, you will. And that was the end of that conversation. And I know that Peter's resolve was there. I know that in, in his heart of hearts, in his hard-headedness, Peter the rock was thinking, I'll never deny Jesus. I'll never forsake this faith. And yet, he did. In the lesson outline, I talk a little bit about the shallow faith of Peter. I really don't think Peter had a shallow faith. I think he let fear catch hold of him. And, and fear causes us to do foolish things. And fear usually causes us to spiral downward. And, and you can read stories of people's failure, great epic failures, and how fear 
has caused them to just continue to spiral downward. Jesus lifts us up. And in the heat of the moment, when fear is, is over here just eating away at us and wanting us to compromise and wanting us to move away from our mission and our vision and our values, faith over here is, is combating that fear. As Paul would say, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When fear is starting to creep in, choose faith. Choose the power of God. Choose the strength of your mind. Peter failed. He was human. So are we. I have failed. In moments when uh, I've lost my way, when I've lost myself as Chaplain Russ challenged me. And it's painful. It's agonizing when we wake up and find ourselves as the prodigal son off in the pig's sty. The strength of faith is not measured by our boisterous claims. The strength of faith is measured by how we respond in moments of fear and challenge. The strength of faith is how we respond when fear is eating at us. Do we let fear spiral us downward or do we claim faith? and rise above it. Peter was sincere and faithful, and, and in a moment of weakness, he denied Jesus. And that was painful. Now, you might at this point compare Peter's denial and Judas's betrayal both of these disciples, both of this inner circle of Jesus, failed Jesus out of fear. Peter was in deep personal anguish, and rather than let that anguish overtake him, he claimed fear and began to work through it to eventual redemption. Judas, also deeply pained, didn't push through, but cho chose to escape all of that by taking his own life. I can't begin to understand the mind nor the pain of Judas. That's for another day, perhaps. But the failure of Peter just as real, but Peter chose to keep living. Peter chose, in spite of the pain, to push through it and eventually would become one of the greatest evangelists in the history of the church. We know Peter's story because Peter allowed Mark to write it. Most of the other gospel writers borrowed some of their stories from the gospel of Mark. And this story of Peter's cowardice and denial would never have made it if somewhere along the way Peter hadn't talked about this story. And all the other gospels picked it up. Peter allowed himself to be vulnerable. His denial is an important story in the redemption of a fallen servant. 
Peter would eventually receive grace from Jesus. And I don't know if Peter ever received that grace fully so that he could walk in a peace about it. I suspect that that night in the courtyard continued to agonize Peter for the rest of his life. It's hard to set aside those moments of failure. It's hard to just push them away. We carry them through our lives. But we don't let them defeat us. Peter refused for that one moment in life to define him. He refused for that one moment in life to defeat him. Judas, on the other hand, is defined and defeated forever by his life choices. Peter did not. Peter would not. Neither will I. I refuse to be defined or defeated by those moments when I have fallen short. I refuse to be defined or defeated by those moments when, in fear, I've made bad decisions. I've lost my way. Instead, I claim I claim and cling to the grace of Jesus the Christ who defines my life. I claim the power of God, the power of a sound mind most of the time. I claim the power of love. which gives me hope in the days to come. I don't know where we're going to be as a country in the days to come. I know a lot of people who are fearful. I don't know where we're going to be in the future of the church in the years to come. I know a lot of people who are fearful. I don't know what's going to happen between now and whenever. But I do know this. God has put me here for a reason in the midst of all this chaos. And God has put you here as well. And I refuse to claim the spirit of fear. Instead, I claim the power of the love of Christ. In spite of my failures, in spite of my sin, in spite of my shortcomings, I claim the power of the love of Christ and hope that in the end, that is what will define me. What about you? Where do you stand? What do you claim this day? pray together. God, forgive us when we let failure and fear overtake us so that we spiral downward. Help us, God, to have the strength. Help us to have the hard-headedness of Peter, at least in the strength of faith, that our fear won't define us nor defeat us but that the love of Jesus will pick us up and help us to walk in a newness of life. I pray that hopefully and gratefully in Jesus' name. Amen. Bo in the Beard here. Thanks for joining me every week. As you do, you're so loyal. Shoot me some emojis so I'll know you're out there. Send me some comments. Email me, watch us on YouTube or at bowprosser.com. Lots of ways to join in the conversation. 
Uh, I just love being with you and sharing with you. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for your friendship as we continue this journey together. Bow in the beard. Keep on rocking. <laughs>